My name's Alice McDonald. I was born in Melbourne, Victoria. I'm nearly 46 years old. Um, I've been in Canberra for about 20 years. And when I arrived and came to the Canberra School of Art to study, my mother said to me, did you know that your ancestors were the first resident white landholders in Canberra? My mother, Annabelle MacDonald, nee McPherson Smith, is currently writing the McPherson story. I now know that these two people, John McPherson and Helen Watsons, were indeed the first white resident landholders, and their third child, their daughter, Helen Jane, is believed to have been the first white child born on what was known then as the Limestone Plains. Newlywed Scottish Highlanders John and Helen arrived in Sydney, then known as Port Jackson, on the 28th of October 1825. Travelling with them on the sailing ship Triton were John's parents Peter and Catherine and his seven younger brothers and sisters. Bonded to work for two years in exchange for his passage, John initially was employed in the Bathurst region as an overseer. By 1828, he was working as superintendent for GT Palmer on Gin and Derra, Limestone Plains, later to be named Canberra. Helen had remained in Bathurst, where their two children, Peter and Catherine, were born. By 1830, she had joined John at Limestone Plains, where a daughter, Helen Jane, was born on the 27th of January, 1830, this being the first birth registered in the region. In 1831, John successfully applied for a grant of land in the area. Tradition has it that he was granted the land for his help in catching a bushranger. This 640 acres on the banks of the Malonglo River they named Springbank. It included some of the grounds of today's Australian National University, the original Acton Sports Ground, football and cricket grounds, race course and the hospital. Sullivan's Creek in the ANU grounds is spanned by the small McPherson Bridge. Much of this land grant is today submerged by Lake Burley Griffin. Springbank, once a small hill but now an island, was the site of the McPherson's home. John added to this initial land grant when he purchased Black Mountain and its peninsula, both significant Aboriginal sites. He bought this land at auction in 1836 for 247 pounds and 10 shillings. It was only four years later that the McPherson family left Limestone Plains and travelled south to take up land in what is today's Victorian Western District. Their fourth son, James, was born en route. The family eventually grew to a total of four sons and seven daughters. There is little mention of the family in the histories of Canberra, perhaps because theirs was a short time living in the region. However, these early Canberra pioneers went on to become a most successful farming and landowning family in the then Port Phillip district. Their second son, John Alexander, became Premier of Victoria in 1869. John and Helen's granddaughter, Helen, left a legacy for the establishment of a trust to benefit Victorian communities. The Helen McPherson Smith Trust is worth over $100 million, its grants supporting a wide range of community needs. It's been hard to find information from the time my great-great-great-grandparents were in the Canberra region, but one of the stories my mother found was in the book Trooper Ainsley by J.C. Orr, where we're told that the McPherson's neighbour, Robert Campbell, brought his son Charles, who was going to become Robert's overseer, to meet Helen and John. The Campbells were invited to stay for a meal at Springbank, they sat at a plank table lit by a whale oil lamp and for supper had thick mutton, slices of wheat bread and dessert of peaches washed down by tea and milk. Most of the ingredients of this meal must have been produced on the farm as there were no butchers, bakers or dairies that were not several days' travel from the limestone plains. Also from my mother's research, we know that Dr John Lotsky, during his journey from Sydney to the Australian Alps in 1834, visited Springbank on the 3rd of February as he made an excursion towards Gin and Gin and Derra. He later reported, 
Proceeding about a mile further, we entered a snug plain where Mr McPherson has a small but well-managed allotment of land. This plain extends about one mile in length, one extremity stretching towards the south-southwest and the mountains, the other northeast towards Majora Hill. It is a Tempe-like spot, but being away from Limestone Creek and its stream valley, water is not sufficiently plentiful. About the middle of the plain is a very conspicuous conical mass of rock, McPherson's Sugarloaf, composed of serpentine of a larger grain than that near the nephrite of a fine greenish colour, which when polished will at some period adorn the edifices of limestone. One day I was standing on Acton Peninsula looking out across the lake towards Springbank Island and I noticed a woman gazing in the same way just a few metres from me. We got chatting and realised we were both descendants of residents from Springbank home. She from the Kay family and me from the McPhersons. It was such a coincidence, or perhaps not at all, that we were both there silently having a fleeting moment contemplating the place where that home and building used to be but is now gone. We both worked nearby. I work at the uni and she worked at the Institute of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Studies Library. And it's not really surprising that standing there, looking out across the lake and the mountains, we both commented on what a special place that peninsula is to us both, and must have been, and still is, to the Aboriginal people of the region. It's always with a deep respect for the environment and the lives of people both ancient to contemporary that I and my family have an interest in these very special places. <laughs>